Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome to another edition of Rule the Galaxy. Uh, if you're auto, if you're tweaking with your headphones, you're tweaking with your sound right now, going, man, this does not sound like Joe Molinero. Um, you're not crazy. It's because it's not. Uh, my name is Nick Shesky. I'm one of the co-hosts on here, and our fearless leader is actually under the weather tonight. Called a quick audible and reached out to the guys and said, hey, uh, we've got a special guest. Would you guys still be willing to do the podcast and we said joe you've done so much for us of course we can do this for you so uh welcome to another episode we're excited to jump in and as our co-host brent who we're going to get to in a second says just talk the wars tonight uh and have a few minutes we got a pretty packed house with us tonight uh but i figured we'll just go around the horn and just check in and uh introduce some of our normal co-hosts but then get into our special guest so i'm just going to go around the horn but mr brent dykeman how the heck are you? Starting with me, huh? I'm doing well. Again, it's uh, it's always a great escape, right? Give me a couple, about an hour, hour and a half every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever we decide to run these things. But it's always good to try to escape into a galaxy far, far away. And I mean, I'm rocking my like most Icely Cantina shirt right now, but Ooh. I am way upstaged by one of the other co-hosts because <laughs> he is rocking some uh, some cool looking ugly christmas sweater atat tie fighter stuff but yeah a little jealous at this moment if i could say <laughs> which actually brings us to a great point forgot to mention this before that you can actually follow us on twitter at rule the galaxy but we also have a youtube page uh and mr brent dykeman's been killing it with his legions videos on there I mean, that was all edited by D-Doc, and Joe is the one who shot it. I mean, but I play the Legions, and for uh, got up got up to 100 views. I, I, Legion seems to be popular. It's a, little, it's a little game that has uh, become my obsession. Um, yeah. Tell everybody where they can follow the YouTube page real quick. So YouTube is Rule of Galaxy. I believe it's Rule of Galaxy SW. D-Doc, is that correct? You probably know better than I do. I think it's just straight up Rule of the Galaxy on Rule YouTube. Galaxy. So yep. search out Rule the Galaxy and you can find uh, there's a bunch of different little highlighters of Legion. There's a little highlights. Our show rundowns are put up there, our full shows. Um, we got everything from like probably episode 50 on, I believe, is about when we started. So we've got about 40 Very good. Well, hey, videos. We'll, we'll keep there. moving and actually we'll just go to the person that was talking next. D-Doc, how the heck are you, man? I'm good. Uh, I'm excited to have Mark on. I'm actually in the middle of uh, listening to uh, the Throne book right now. So it's technically like he's been speaking to me over the last couple of days without even knowing it. So yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm just happy to get this episode rolling. Right, 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 right. Alfie Molinero, the man, the myth, the Boba Fett champion. How are you, my friend? Doing good, man. I just can't wait to jump into this dumpster fire of a show without our fearless leader here. <laughs> We were texting about it before the show. And we said, what's the worst? That what's the happen? worst that could happen? A lot is the worst that could happen. All of a sudden we lose a ton of people because they go, man, we don't like it without Joe. But uh, <laughs> you're doing great so far, Nick. Yeah, yeah. Doing great. Great. It'll be great. It's one of those things you show up every week and you just jump on the podcast and it's not that big of a deal. And it's fun to give your opinions. And then you run it and you're like, oh, this is what it must feel like to lead things. <laughs> so it's good. Uh, but hey, we have a very special guest on with us tonight none other than mr mark thompson if you are not currently listening to star wars audiobooks shame on you i will say that shame on you go listen to some star wars audiobooks uh mark does an incredible job narrating a majority of um not just older audiobooks that are coming in but new audiobooks that are coming out as well and we are privileged enough to have him on the show tonight mark how the heck are you? Thanks so much for being here tonight. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I'm, do I'm doing great. I'm super happy to be here with you guys and uh, looking forward to this. And I am also very jealous of uh, the ugly Christmas sweater. I have one that lights up that I could have given you a run for your money if I know we were doing that. But that is a really great one with the ad ad on it. I love it. And now I got to ask, what what's on the one that lights up? It's uh, it's like it's 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 a bunch of R2D or R2 units. And then there's like the LED lights that like kind of light up like Christmas style on there. And it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I get to wear it yeah. one time every year. <laughs> I'm realizing that the Royal blue does not look the best for my uh, ginger complexion right now. I'm living with it. You can just blame that on the camera, blame that yeah. on, you know, just, we'll get you a better yeah, filter. That camera. 
get you one of Joe's ring lights and, and we'll be okay. But Mark, <laughs> what we, we consider ourselves very lucky to have you on very busy world that you live in right now, especially with um, the latest Thrawn book that just released this last week. Um, I, I would just be so curious and I know, um, and, and we'll do this a little differently, but guys, I'd love for y'all to jump in on this too. Uh, but obviously a big week, I would imagine any time that a new book drops, what has that been like for you seeing that release now? Uh, what, what's life been like for you? I mean, it's really been busy. Like we've, uh, cause as soon as we finished recording that one, I had a couple weeks off and then we jumped into a, a new one for, uh, high republics. And then I just finished that. And now we're doing the, you know, promotion for lesser evil. And then I've got a couple weeks off and then I'm going into another one that's not star Wars related, but, uh, it's just it's so it's been a little bit of back to back to back to back, which has been super fun and I'm super grateful. But I'm I'm looking forward to having some turkey on Thursday. <laughs> so, <laughs> Get a little bit of a break, Mark. Remind for for those uh, I know we had you on the show at one point, but for those that hadn't had a chance to listen to that first episode that you were on, give us just a an average. How long how long does it take you to record one of these audiobooks? Uh, it's definitely a process like I um, recording it takes about uh, five solid days from like 10 in the morning till about six at night um, but there's a lot of prep work that I have to do beforehand so it usually takes me about a week to two weeks to kind of read through the book and really understand it and figure out what character voices I want to do and uh, get everything situated so there's it, like it's it's a pretty long process and then even after i'm done recording they the editors have to work on it and and they put all the music and effects in and uh there's always pickups and flubs and things like that so like it's about a month from you know inception to <laughs> the end uh before it could be shipped out or kind of you know uploaded to the the servers but uh so it's 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 uh it's pretty intense but it's 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 definitely something i'm super grateful to be a part of but it, it definitely takes a lot of work which is amazing to me because like I'm a geek for audiobooks, but I, I, you know, sometimes I think people think it's like you said, you sit down, you just read the book and, you know, yeah. get it on tape and that's it, you know, kind of right. thing. But the <laughs> amount of pre-work of, of determining, well, you're going to get this voice and this character now has a British voice and this character has this guttural, you know, like to, to assign all those uh, different things is, is pretty fantastic. So you have a yeah. little bit of a break now. Uh, I, I guess I'm curious with, in the fast paced world, is there ever a moment where you get to stop after like, so you've done the three throne books that have just recently come out where you just get to like revel in, <laughs> man, we did it. You know, we, 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 we had a trilogy that just came out. <laughs> I mean, uh, a little bit, I think, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I tend to feel that way if, if people like the book and if, if people enjoy what we did, I'll, I'll start to hear little trickles of it on social media and, and people will send little messages or write little reviews or whatever. And if, if people like what we did, then, then I feel a kind of a sense of, okay, ah, we did it. You know, usually that's happening concurrently with getting ready for another project. And uh, you know, I, I work on animation stuff as well and other things. So that it, it definitely can feel like it's always go, 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 go. But, uh, but it, it's nice when, when it when it did resonate with someone or, or it finds an audience and, and people really like it and actually what's interesting too is like sometimes because there's so much content being created and, and it's hard to kind of keep up with it all like sometimes people will discover these you know much much later after they've been released you know and that's that's kind of fun too because it's like you know all of a sudden someone will you know reach out about like dark disciple or like, you know, <laughs> or like, you know, one of the, like, you know, the, the legacy of the force series or something like that, or, or even like heir to the Jedi, like they'll be like, Oh, wow. You know? So it's like, it, it's kind of fun. Those are kind of in anytime somebody really likes what we did, it kind of puts a little extra wind in my sails and kind of gets me motivated for the next one. If, if, if it, if it connected with someone in some way, it like really, Kind of helps me out and get light, lights a little fire under me again because sometimes you lose track of everything and, and you kind of feel like you know because you're not it's not like a, a play or where you have the immediate response from the audience so it's 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 fun to hear back when people like it and and it kind of like reminds you like oh yeah this is cool and people like this <laughs> so yeah go ahead Brent 
So in the movie world, they go on like the talk shows and they go on the junkets. And is there anything like that for the audiobook world? I mean, obviously you're sitting here on our podcast and hopefully getting the word out and pumping it up that way. But is there like a junket that you have, like a circuit you go on, like other podcasts or anything like that to try to promote? Uh, ma- it's mainly podcasts. Like a, a, a lot of podcasts have reached out in it, and I've definitely kind of um, gone on a bunch of them over the last several years. Uh, I've, I've been kind of making the rounds more on those, and, and they're super fun. Uh, and it's more catered specifically to, you know, Star Wars or animation or, or these different topics. So it's 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 definitely kind of feels more like family and kind of you know like people that like you know you get it you know as opposed to like i've been on a couple podcasts where it's more um like a five minute segment or something and i don't know that they appreciate it as much as formats like this so (laughs) it's more fun to talk to people that are genuinely star wars fans and, and kind of really excited about all this stuff all right well mark you said something a second ago of like i love it when you know i hear from someone who you know i they didn't see the audiobook when it first came out but then they you know, either stumble into it. I know for many of us here, that was our story of, of finding the audiobooks. I know Brent, Brent, you jumped in and you started listening to audiobooks and, and was kind of like going over to the dark side. Uh, it, it is going over to the dark side. I was forced down <laughs> to the dark side by all of you people. And I had like, you guys, I think T Bob said it last way, they're so well read and they still, there, there's a level of Star Wars fandom um, and you hit different tiers of it. Yeah. And, um the book level and the comic book level is a whole different tier for me wow Um, i believe the last time you were on i was at nine hours of listening on my audible i just checked when we came up i'm now oh sorry nine nine days i was up to of listening to star wars stuff i'm now up to 12 days oh wow uh, a little over a year so i've like knocked out and i've re-listened to heir to the empire Uh, oh wow i've re-listened to a couple of the books as well that you've narrated um but yeah, no, like I, 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 yes, it is definitely the dark side because again, you go deeper <laughs> into and make it. Yes. So, yeah. But I, I like I, the way you put that I, with the different I, tiers of fandom. Because sure, it's, but I it's also, very uh, true. And I attribute my level of listening to your skill of narration and um, all of the different voices and stuff. And oh, another wow. quick question since I'm talking, um, do you ever find it, do you ever lose a voice? Or do you ever get lost in voices as you're doing your character pops and as you're popping in and out of voices, do you ever lose your place? <laughs> oh yeah. All the time. Like I, cause I, I start to, um, I don't know if this is a, a proper term or a term used by anyone else, but sometimes I, I've heard, I've heard people say vocal drift and you kind of like start like, like, like if you ever see like on the Simpsons, like in the, in the early seasons where they were on the Tracy Ullman show, like Homer sounds one way. And then like, as you get into like, you know, season 15 or like, you know, or like, you know, it's much sooner than that, but like his voice is much different now than it was when it first started. And I, sometimes that um, is something I have to battle or fight in, in, in kind of like, rem- like I have these little samples on my phone and I try to listen to them as much as I can. But sometimes like I'll be in the middle of a scene and I'll be like, wait, am I doing this right? <laughs> and then I'll like, I'll have to see Kevin. I'm so sorry. Let me, let me start over. Like, and I'll listen to it. Okay. Yeah. We're in the right ballpark, but you know, like I just, you're, you're doing so many. And then all of a sudden they'll bump up with us against a character that is maybe in the same ballpark as them. And you're like, Oh no, I got to make sure that I'm making these guys distinct. And so then maybe it drifts a little bit more this way or that way. And so, yeah, it, it definitely happens a lot. And I have to, I, I can, tend to second guess myself sometimes and have to kind of go back to my anchor, my little vocal reference and try to kind of navigate my way through it. Right. Well, Mark, it actually, it actually segues into this because we, we put it out on Twitter and, you know, put it out to the listeners of Rule of the Galaxy and said, hey, what questions do you have uh, for Mark? If, if we could ask him, you know, anything, what, what would you have us ask him? Um, and at uh, Duchess of Dark Saber, excuse me, at Dark Saber Light, uh, runs her own podcast true or false mean, true yes yes, uh, yes yes posted a question um and first just gave you props for your marching on row uh voice and in her <laughs> words said it was inspired and i would you know second that as well too uh but asked the question and said um do you receive any notes from the characters voices etc from the high republic team before recording specifically um light of the jedi like was there collaboration because of how involved the High Republic series is, or 
did you just kind of get creative reign to make the characters your own and to kind of sound how you think, Hey, I think if this is how they would sound. Yeah. Um, I, I did not get any specific direction from any of the high Republic authors or the high Republic group. Um, but I will say like a lot of, it's always open to interpretation, but a, a lot of their input, I think is in the novel itself. Like I, I think they, they always do such a great job of describing who this character is sometimes even what it sounds like, you know, and how other characters view that character. So that, that heavily informs the choices I'm making. Um, and, you know, obviously that every artist or every performer is going to maybe interpret it slightly differently, or they may read that paragraph and, and that might resonate with them in a different way. So I'm sure it's going to differ from narrator to narrator. Um, but a, a lot of it is just kind of what the text says to me. And, and then I try to come up with a voice on, based on that. And then it's a collaboration in the booth with uh, Kevin Thompson, the, the director I work with. Um, and, and a lot of times he'll kind of nudge me one way, one way or the other, or, or he'll say, you know what, let's actually try something totally different uh, because I feel like that's going to connect, you know, more to the core of what this character is. And so we, you know, most of the time it's stuff I'm coming up with. And then there's about 10 to 20% of the time where, you know, Kevin and I will, Kevin will maybe direct me a different way or, or kind of say, let's, let's try something different here. And, uh, you know, and, and all of it is always, the, the roots of everything is always from what the authors have written on the page. So it's, de it's definitely inspired by, you know, what they've written. Man, which I think is so, I mean, again, what a challenge, right? Of there are some characters and, you know, like even think to the, uh, the throne trilogy using the voice of Luke, who everybody already knows, and then introducing new characters like Thrawn and yeah, uh, just, just truly awesome guys. I'm curious just around the horn, any more questions from Mark specifically before we jump into um you know our litany of news and topics and other stuff yeah d doc yeah um i i was gonna say i mean i'm i've always been a big audiobook guy and i mean you got i've always been a star wars fan but since i started listening to the podcast now being on with you guys i've started listening to a lot more books and i mean i think this is the first one i'm listening to right now that i'm listening to the first thrawn book and um, it's funny because it's like hearing his voice right now. I'm like removing wallpaper in my house right now. And I just can hear him like in Thrawn's thoughts, just saying like, Dave shows frustrated frustration with the <laughs> wallpaper. <laughs> his muscles grow tense, you know? Yeah. But yes. it, it, I, for me, the special part of audiobooks is like, I, I'm, I was listening to Game of Thrones for the second time. So I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Roy Dotrice who did those, but his like... It's, it's the same with your voice and the way you do the characters is for some reason, the fact that I'm able to work and listen to a book at the same time, I'll like look at a project and I'll, I'll remember like, you know, oh, oh, that's the part where so-and-so showed up in the book oh, or wow. where this happened. And, you know, it, that's why I appreciate audio books. Like that's awesome. I, I was never the biggest reader, but being able to listen to them, I soak it in a lot better. So. Yeah, yeah, you 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 really do have a lot of influence on the story when you when you read it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Alfie. So, am I the only one here that cannot listen to audiobooks? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you mean like while you're doing stuff? Uh, yeah, or just I, in general. I, I just can't in general. I've tried. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I listen to all three of the High Republic books to and from Florida, and I I guarantee you i listened to them at least twice uh -huh. trying to because i'd be a hundred miles down the road and realize i haven't listened for so many chapters oh yeah <laughs> you know what alfie i'm guilty of that sometimes too I've, I've tried before you know joe tells me you know if i'm working on if he's working on something he'll put one on i almost uh the car is really maybe the only place that i can listen to him or if i'm mowing the yard or doing something that doesn't require like uh you know, me to actually be. Pay attention. I can't. Yeah, yeah pay I, attention. I, yeah. I can't listen to audiobooks, podcasts. It it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. My mind wanders so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no. I did enjoy the Marshawn Row. That was really good. I love that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brent. Um, so I was gonna say um an ode to you as well. Um, so I played my Star Wars Legion game, but a friend of mine got us started in a role playing Star Wars uh book or not book, a role-playing game. And I just oh, wow. decided to be a Wookiee, Force-sensitive Wookiee person. Nice. And as we're playing the role-playing game, 
Um, I named my guy Bateau because if you say it with a list, it kind of sounds like asshole. So, <laughs> and I talk and I can't get into it, but I, I use the monkey voice. <laughs> yeah. To the empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking like that. Right. Well, so I started using it and I like, I went into like that voice and when I was talking as the Wookiee, they lose it because they have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. So then like, I'm like, here, listen. And then like, when I play it, they're like, oh my God, that's almost like, 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 so it's 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 an ODU to you because like right. uh, that was an interesting <laughs> way of making a Wookiee sound yeah. to where you can actually hear them. It was okay, but I just well, wanted well, to share that. Yeah, it is funny you say that because like it was. I think Charles uh, did that in Light of the Jedi, and he had Buriaga kind of like because sometimes authors will write Wookies and they'll kind of like say you know they grunted and then kind of say what it is. But this was like one of the times where they decided to actually give him actual dialogue. And it was like, how are we going to do that? Like what? Because normally it's a sound effect or normally I'll, I'll do the, the kind of growls on the snarls. But this time it was like they actually had like dialogue he was saying. And so that's that was our best attempt. So I'm glad it at least helped your role playing game. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. I enjoyed it. Like they, they, they lost it. They're like when I played it, they're like, oh, they're like their eyes got really wide. They're like, OK, so now I know where it's coming from. Like, yeah, yeah. I coming up with someone trying to I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, awesome. Mark. Before before we jump into some of our kind of hot topics for the night, uh, I, I am just curious for you. And again, um, I I know that you have to play pretty close to the chest as far as you know. Uh, I, I think back to when you were on the last time talking about you know you released the book for uh, you know Force Awakens before everybody knows that it's even come. Like so, you're holding and guarding these close secrets at a thirty thousand foot. Uh, publisher clearinghouse you know what whatever it, approved level uh what are you most excited about as a star wars fan coming up uh, obviously you're privy to more stuff than me uh and, and to the rest of our crew is there anything you can tell us like as a star wars fan i'm, I'm most excited for this project coming up or or this next thing um well yeah i think i'm uh, i'm just i'm actually going on amazon right now to make sure i'm not saying anything that's not public knowledge <laughs> uh okay so yeah, I'm uh, I'm I, I'm really loving the High Republic stories. Like I'm I'm a huge Jedi fan, um, and I just feel like the all the authors have done a really amazing job of kind of getting you in the mindset of the Jedi and showing differences of opinions about the Jedi and how the Jedi view the Force differently and how they might approach problems differently. And uh, it's much more nuanced than perhaps uh, my understanding of the Jedi was previous before these books so i really love all the stuff they've been doing and we just actually finished recording uh the final of the delray books that will complete phase one of the high republic and it's called fallen star um and that's coming out in january and it's uh it's just it's really good i can't say much more than that but it's uh it, it's it's claudia gray wrote it and you know she's she's one of the best out there right now <laughs> and uh again like she just huge home run like re really nailed the characters and, and kind of you know really gives you a lot to think about and there's a lot of like in intense things happening that kind of wrap up this phase um that will kind of change the landscape of what's happening in the higher republic from here on out so it's 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 a it's a really great story and i'm really looking forward for people uh being able to check that out and it, I, I really love doing that one mm. Yeah, Brent, go for it. This is for Dick or anybody else who might know. How how many books are in phase one? I know that there's comic books and stuff like that, but like about how many books, Mark, do you remember how many are in this phase of I like not. Six, six to nine or that sounds about right. Like I think I got there through were three. Okay, yeah. There were there were three in the in the kind of like uh Del Rey that was uh doing right. kind of the, the quote unquote adult novels you know what makes something adult or not i don't know but like they, they said those were the adult novels and then i think disney did a bunch and then there was a there was a fourth book that delray did actually um that was one of the ones that introduced the dren gear um that i i didn't narrate that one but that was also delray and then there's a bunch of kind of under disney publishing that they 
have labeled young adult books that 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 were there were several of those that came out and then all the comic books as well so um i've lost track of the, of the exact number but yeah it, it, it's a decent amount <laughs> gotcha d doc did you have something yeah, I got uh, just one more question for you. It's more of like a technical question because um, I wasn't on the first time you're on with these guys. But like when you're recording these books, you, you said, uh, did you say you have a producer who's like or a, a director kind of who's there with you? Yeah. So like, will you be doing a line and then like if you screw it up, will you just go right back onto that line? And will editors go, you know, like if you know you screwed up a line you go back one sentence and redo that sentence or do you like, how does that process work? It's different for different studios or different, um, you know, narrators and, 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 and different projects. So there's a, a lot of people call it punch recording, which is if, if you're recording and you mess up, you move the marker on pro tools back you, you play where you last read off. And then as soon as you get to the part where you messed up, you jump back in, you punch back in and then have to kind of continue the flow from there. Um, okay. I did that once or twice and hated it. And it's, it's a, it's a really challenging way to work in my opinion, because you're constant. It's more about, you know, not flubbing on the commas or the, or the periods and, and, and the words instead of it is about the performance. Um, but for, for a lot of times for budget reasons, it's, it's just, a lot easier to do punch recording because um, if you don't do that, then you have to go through however many hours of recording and listen for every say, Hey, sweetie, how are you? Uh, and listen for every like single um, mess up and then edit and splice. And, and, and so, so we do it that way when we do the star Wars books, like we, we, they just hit record and let it run. And then however many times I mess up, I just start over again or kind of, you know, back up a couple of sentences, but it's not the pressure of, I have to jump right in and then stay perfect until the next time I mess up, it's like, I, I have yeah. the freedom to mess up and then I can, you know, which is awful for the editors because I really give them a lot of <laughs> work to they, they fully earn their money when they have to work on me. <laughs> so, but I, I find it helps me be more free in the performance if I'm not, yeah, no, you know, that's having awesome. to be so like worried about every little flub. Well, Mark, we, we could spend hours, I mean, just talking audiobook ins and outs uh but but thank you for even even just bringing us up to it, it gets uh, I personally for me as a star wars fan it gets me excited knowing man the guy that's recording this stuff is excited about the stuff that he's recording like it's one thing to just do a job it's another thing to go man i i love what i get to do and it's excited about and i'm excited about the books and and where they're going and for me that's a you know one of the things i love the most about star wars is the is the print edition and i guess audiobook you would say now kind of thing. So um, I, I figured we could go ahead and just jump straight in. It was busy uh, week for some Star Wars stuff, some stuff that's come out, some things on the Twitterverse. Um, Alfie's referred to that as, you know, the flaming dumpster fire before, but if you broach it carefully, you can find some right stuff. So um, let's go ahead and we'll, and we'll jump into some of this. Um, first thing is Kathleen Kennedy was in the news quite a bit this last week, at least on my Twitter feed on on, uh, I don't know if it was on yours as well too. Joe sent me some stuff on it too. Um, the first that I saw was really, um, sh there was a soundbite or a, a quote that was that she said that, you know, Hayden and Ewan McGregor were emotional being back filming these characters together again. I know Obi-Wan is something that we've talked a ton about on this show, arguably maybe the one that we're most excited for, except for Brent, who's excited for Andor. Uh, but, but really, I, I don't know about you, but I told my wife the other day, I said, the world is going to stop in our house when <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi comes out and I'm just going to be gone for a couple of days. So you just need to know, like, that's where I'll, I'll be. I'm curious for you guys hearing this. Does that surprise you? Does that feel pretty on par for where we're at? I'm curious to your responses and, and we'll take these in kind of any way, but uh, anybody want to start us on that? Alfie. Yeah, Alfie. Yeah um that's like saying water is wet and the sky is blue i mean i don't i mean i i get it i get it i'm i'm just being you know a little silly there but yeah i'm not really shocked that it would be so emotional that was a real high point for the prequels with revenge of the sith it ended on such a great note and since then everyone's wanted them to come back and now they finally are right and the excitement just keeps building Brent, you had your hand up. No, I was just going to, uh, I, 
I, I hesitate on on Hayden, and I hope he got better as an actor. Um, <laughs> and I'm not surprised that these guys. By the way, Ewan's been talking about it as he's gone through the junkets. Like, I think he was in talks for over ten years to try to get something connected. Um, so Ewan being connected to it, and you investing into the role of Obi Wan, um, I can see how he can be emotional. Um, I just have never been sold on Hayden Christensen. And I know I'm probably one of the only ones that say this. I mean, we just talked to Ryan McGee and his daughter thought he should have won an Oscar um, for his performance, right? Uh, have you watched Revenge of the Sith? Uh, uh, so I don't like, I, I, I'm, yes, I did. But every time I watch it, I'm telling you, he looks like a guy trying to act. I don't see a character. I don't see a person. I see him trying to act. I and I don't I don't have a reverence for Revenge of the Sith that everybody else does. I I and I think it's because it's Hayden trying to be something that I don't see him being. When I see Ewan McGregor, I see I don't see I see Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? I don't see Ewan McGregor in that world. Like I like the whole way through, I haven't seen um I see a character, I see Obi-Wan, I don't see Ewan. Uh, like when I watch Dooku, I don't see it was Christopher Lee. I see Dooku. Like that is Dooku. He embodies Dooku. There is absolutely nothing like you could talk to me and I could talk to you about being Dooku, but that is Dooku in my mind. Um, I could go like Padme. Like I feel like that is Padme. I don't see that as Natalie Portman. I see that as Padme. But I see that as Hayden Christensen trying to be something else. I, I can't explain it like any other way than that. And I never thought that he was all that great. And so I never really bought into him being Vader. I mean, I hear people talk about the pain that he was showing and that he was trying to show this. And I think they, I feel like they're putting their feelings for it into what they believe the performance was. And I just never really got that connection from that performance. So <laughs> when you say that like, it's emotional, would they get back into it? Yeah, for sure. I, for them, I think it would be. But for me, it's not like, I'm just hoping that Hayden has grown and I can see him as something other than a, a human being trying to play a character and trying to act. Oh, Brent, maybe your heart will thaw one day and, <laughs> and you'll, you'll begin to love Hayden Christensen as the way that I do as a child of the prequels. And it's amazing. Before I, before I divulge on this, Mark, I'm curious from your point, you're a part of production. You're a part of, you know, before, you know, the whole world sees something and, and feeling the emotion of something before. Does this surprise you? Does this get you more excited for Obi-Wan Kenobi hearing that, you know, it's, it's, it's not just, yeah, I'm back in and I'm cashing in on something, but I actually, like, I believe on this character. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think like you were saying at the top, like, this is the series I'm most excited for. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm loving everything, but like, I cannot wait to see Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi again. And I love that he loves it and that he's excited about it. I was surprised that um, they weren't trying to keep it a secret that Hayden was in this because mm. I thought maybe we might, it might be like a, you know, a surprise cameo where we're seeing a flashback of them during the Clone Wars, which would be really exciting. And we might still get that. Um, but the fact that they're kind of promoting him so heavily to me, that's would indicate it. He's he's a big part of the show. Like he, I, I think it's not just going to be like a he's in this one episode. Like I think it's major. And I don't know if you guys saw the little teaser they did a couple of weeks ago or whatever. But the fact that in the concept art they showed him Obi Wan versus Vader, like I was excited by that because there's a part of me that would love to see that. But then I'm also like surprised that oh they're going there because I I wondered if that would you know. Uh, mess up what happens in New Hope where they like, you know, oh, we meet, we finally meet again. It's been such a long time. Like, I guess they still have 10 years where they could not see each other again, you know, between this moment and and there. But uh, I was wondering, like, I, I hope they deal with it well enough and, 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 and make sure that it doesn't, you know, erase what the, 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 the weight of that moment in episode four, where it seems like maybe they hadn't seen each other for, you know, a couple decades, you know, so like, I don't, I don't know, but like, I'm sure they can find, I'm sure they've got that in mind. They're obviously not going <laughs> to not be aware that that needs to still be there. But I was, so I was a little surprised that that was what they're going, but also excited 
because I would love to see Ewan McGregor fight Vader. Like that's going to be amazing. So right, it's, I, and that's a really good point, Mark. Because I, I, I guess even I, I hadn't thought about that yet. Like when the Mandalorian came out, and nobody knew, and except for maybe Alfie knew, but but nobody else knew that you know it was going to be a baby Yoda Grogu, right? And there yeah. was the 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 shock across the world of like you know when everybody realized what it was. You do think. Man, if they had been able to keep this under wraps, which I don't know how they would have, but if they had been able to, the shock and awe of right, I've seen. maybe sprinkling him in and, and having him come be a part of it. I, I know that when I when I read this, um, for me, I, I, you know, I joked a second ago, I'm child of the prequels, right? Um, I was like Ryan McGee's daughter and was like, which is a weird statement to say out loud. Can I just say <laughs> that now I'm hearing that? But, uh, sorry, Ryan. But what I meant by that is like, I was engrossed in those movies like revenge of the sith ended and i thought in my mind that's it like we're not getting any more star wars and i went into like mourning as a 13 year old you know and kind of was like well i better go read every book in my library on <laughs> yeah. on uh star wars and jumped into some of this stuff but i i didn't re- realize till later that hayden christensen had even been crapped on you know for his acting chops and yeah there are parts where it's it's definitely wouldn't what gets me excited about this phrase is I'm hoping that this is like a redemptive uh, experience for him in Star Wars. That'd be cool. Uh, in the same way that I, you know, you look at some of the sequel characters that we got, like Rose Tico and, you know, some uh, people that just got kind of burned by pockets of just toxic fan base and, and hoping mm-hmm. that there's a full circle moment where like Hayden Christensen now to the fan base is kind of like this weird fine wine that's just like gotten better <laughs> over yeah. time and people have been able to most people have been able to overlook you know some of the wooden acting and stuff uh and I and I really hope it's a beautiful experience and and might pave the way for more Star Wars fans who have been kind of pushed to the to the margins to come back mm. into the fold because it's Star Wars and we love Star Wars and yeah, yeah. Alfie you had you had your hand up yeah I think part of it is we've gotten older and we've grown with these movies and we've had time to listen to interviews with people who made the movies that kind of made us understand a little bit more about that wooden acting and that silly dialogue. And yeah, it just didn't really work that well, but after this much time and hearing George Lucas explain why these, he did something this way, we kind of understand it a little more and take it with a little grain of salt and it's grown on us. Yeah. D duck. That's I keep seeing Hayden at all these comic cons and I'm just like looking at his face, just like, you know, what happened in this show. Man. <laughs> like You wow. already filmed it and you know what happened. Uh, and he's one thing I also want to comment that man can pull off any outfit. Cause he shows up wearing like a t-shirt and a blazer and like track pants. And he just looks cool. He, he keeps wearing that Kenobi stunt team hat at all these, he just looks happy. And I, I think that he is going to have a free mind going into filming this show. And I think we're going to get the best version of him that mm-hmm. we could get in star Wars. I, Cause like, like you said, in, um, in uh, revenge of the Sith, like I think he was hitting his stride in that movie. And like, you know, obviously like with what Brent has said, <laughs> I mean, I know that there's stuff, which I, I'm the same age as Nick, basically. I'm 30 years old. So I grew up as a kid watching it. And, you know, I, I thought he was awesome. As you get older, you you see the stuff that people criticize. I'm just excited to see these guys have another go at it and have another swing at each other. So, yeah, Brent. I also think, and this is also one that I'm not attached to as well. I'm not strongly attached to the Clone Wars, but I believe that the fans that are fans of Anakin are also strong fans of the Clone Wars and have saw the character development that was created for Anakin through that 10 years-ish that show was being developed and created and now have understood and, and, and in all of those big gaps that were present and didn't understand or it makes a little bit more sense because the way that they developed that character through the Clone Wars, which again is not something that necessarily resonates well with me, um, in that time frame, I don't, I don't know if it's the era or what, but it just is not something that is like really grabbed on to me. So right, right. Well, I know we're all excited for Kenobi, and I, and d- we still don't have a definitive release date, anything like that yet. No, no. Everyone seems to think that it's going to be sometime, or at least a trailer or something. They they think they will release it in May the fourth and try to 
capitalize on Star Wars Day, but you see what they did on Disney Plus Day. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what comes from that, right? But I think that's the that's the expectation is something will come around that time. And the other part is it's a short series, right? Like limited six, like four, six, eight, maybe six. Six. I think I six. Man, yeah, what, so does anybody know what Book of Boba Fett is? Eight, eight or nine. It, it is eight. I, okay. I think they said eight or nine is where I and I can't tell you off the top. That's off the top of my head, and I'm trying to. Okay. I'm not. Yeah, nine was the last one I saw. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Well, hey, we'll we'll keep moving through this list, but I know we're all excited about that. Kathleen Kennedy was also quoted again this week. Oh boy! And, and this is where I'm excited to to jump in. Joe sent this to me. Uh, but she was quoted saying that the sequel trilogies will live on and there the characters will uh, there will be projects for them in the future. Uh, speaking of movies that have received some hate for some acting and some other stuff, I figure we might as well just wade right. Screw, screw the waiting right in. We're just going to jump right in on this one. And I'm curious, how does that statement hit you when you hear that, when you hear that there's that we're moving on from that? Yeah, Mr. Brent Dykeman. I was uh, so I think when I have arguments because again so prequel era never really resonated with me. I'm an original trilogy is probably the supreme, but the second level, my second sequel, the sequel trilogies are ranked second second in the trilogies with me, and I know that that is not the case with a lot of fans. And every time that I am trying to defend the sequels, one thing that I can get from most people when we have that conversation is. The characters were really good. They had potential. Hold on. Alfie, can you pick up? Because my dogs are fighting right now. So, <laughs> Okay. Uh, first, you have to change would uh, to could is what she said. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. But after the few weeks that Disney's had with Star Wars, this is to me, this is just pouring gasoline on the fire. Why would you say something like this? Because you instantly got the Twitter verse up in arms. Oh, I love the sequels. They're you know they're going to make more. Oh, I hated the sequels. It's going to be terrible. Broom boy. You, yeah, you. <laughs> you're just coming off of this bad PR with, uh, with that uh, Disney Plus week. I get you know, people love the sequels. I like the sequels. Love the characters. Some of them, I'd like to see more. But let's stop. You know until we have something definitive then let's talk hmm. yeah anybody else yeah mark what do you think about this yeah uh it's i i have to agree because i i think uh we just got word that rogue squadron is now kind of on hold and, and maybe permanently not happening uh originally they announced this boba fett movie that eventually turned into the series which we're all excited about but like they, they've kind of had a history now where they've announced a couple of things and then think that they fall apart. So like, it, it's kind of like, like the, they announced the Ryan Johnson trilogy and then that looks like it, that's been shelved and, you know, um, so, so it's like, it, it's kind of like, if you do that too many times, you start to stop trusting like what's real and what's not and what, what's going to, you know, and so I, I think I'd rather hear about it when it's actually officially happening and then i can actually get excited about it but that being said I, i'm i'm definitely in the camp of i really enjoyed the sequels and and would love to see what happens with ray i would love to see you know ray starting a jedi order i want to see finn you know perhaps become a jedi or or you know start to feel out what what connection to the force he has more um so there's a lot of things that, that i i would love to see happen um, and I, so I, I would be hundred percent on board for more stories. Um, but don't play with my heart. Like, don't, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like don't tell me it's going to happen. And then, you know, like 10 years later, whatever happened with that thing. So, you know, um, but yeah, so I, I, I would love to see it happen. Yeah. D-Doc. Yeah. I, I honestly think I'm, I'm not going to sit here and crap on Kathleen Kennedy. Cause it's, you know, but uh, that, I'll leave that up to Twitter, but, um, <laughs> I think that she just needs to hire Alfie and he will sit there next to her. <laughs> and every time she's about to say a quote, she will no. whisper it into Alfie's ear and Alfie will say yes or no. She's no. not ready quote, for that smoke. The quote from her for the 
Kenobi show was I was surprised at how incredibly emotional it was for them, where every Star Wars fan is like, what? You're surprised it's emotional <laughs> for them, you know? Like, But I mean, I think she just needs an assistant that has their pulse on the fan base a little bit with some of, some of the stuff going on. Because like you said, I mean, I know there's a lot of big sequel trilogy fans out there on Twitter, which I'm, I'm like, so 50, 50 with the uh, sequels, but um, there's a lot of huge sequel fans and, you know, you get people hyped up and you don't want to, you don't want to lift people up just to let them down. So if that's going to happen, you, you, it should just happen. You know, I'd love to see a Ray and Finn show though. Kind of like uh, what Mark was saying, like Ray training Finn, get, give those characters some of the justice like they deserve basically. D-Doc, I think you're right on, man. I think especially, like, what have we said the entire time we've done this show? Like, the Star Wars we have is better than the Star Wars we don't have, right? So, like, bring it on. Like, if there's more new to Brent, you know, Brent always talks about the new. If there's more new, it's for me. Like, like bring it on. Now it's just a matter of is it realistic to hope that or is this a PR stunt that we're throwing out hoping to just rally some momentum and some hype? Alpha, you had your hand raised. Yeah, just to this point, you know, we're all hyped for this Kenobi show that's coming out soon. You got to remember this started in development back in Rogue One. Yeah, uh, wow. <laughs> and it, it's gone through directors, script changes, shelved, all that stuff. And how long ago was that? And we're it's true. And now it's down to six a six episode series. So it's not that it can't happen. It's just, like Mark said, I, I don't want my hopes build up again for something that's going to be shelved right which i wonder if this brings us back to the point so last week we did the show with ryan mcgee we still have series that. i'm sorry to cut you off but no, we, we, we still have series from their last announcement that we've never heard another peep about yeah, yeah. but what happened to the lando show and the, yeah. the droid show yeah 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 that's it so I, it, and now it, you're announcing new stuff yeah yeah it's a little I, too I'm, thin they, they said it in the last show that we did where they talked about we we unfortunately we just know too much right like we know too much and we're, we're in the like it's too real time on some of these like we, we talked about the rogue one or excuse me rogue squadron being canceled now everybody was all bummed about that i still come back to the fact that um while yes it's true that twitter can be a dumpster fire to alfie's point pouring gasoline on the fire of like, Hey, we're going to continue to give you stuff to be excited about knowing that the average star Wars fan doesn't know how pre-production works and how getting scripts. Brent did a great job last week talking us through, you know, like, Hey, this happens on almost every movie ever, you know, where there's all these different things. The problem is when we set it in stone and we go like, get excited, right? This is coming. This this is coming. This this year. Yeah. That's it. And then if something gets, I, I am so uh, used now or used to putting like when I see like a release date for something specifically to Star Wars going like it'll be an additional two years <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. without a doubt like it, <laughs> just bump it back two years and they right, might right. as well in the bottom say May 2023 to 2025 <laughs> you know yeah. and just kind of leave it at that Brent did you have something you were saying? Um, just since my dogs decided to calm down, I just wanted to kind of finish my thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, like, I think it's also tempering the, like, so we're fanatical, right? We're, we're on a podcast. We talk about the wars, uh, weekly. We, we dive into this, we care about this and we're passionate about this, but there's also a level of like realisticness that I feel like is lost in that fandom and is lost in that level of passion and that. So Yes, they're talking about something that's going to come or the, something that could potentially come. They, it's not saying that it's going to happen, just like I think Alfie mentioned. But I, what I was going to try to say was, and I think you guys have hit on it too, is everyone kind of enjoyed the characters and saw the potential of the characters through the sequels. And I think they enjoyed the characters and the new characters. I think we all agree that Ray is a fantastic character. Finn has potential to be a really cool character, Mm -hmm. except for he yells Ray all the time, right? (laughs) I mean, that's pretty much all he did. Like he has the potential there, like they have created, Poe has the potential with a background to be a pretty cool character. Like those three main ones, and I can see them showing up. And I think what also she was trying to allude to is they may find themselves into Andor or 
they may find up and show up in Ahsoka, or they may show up and there may be sprinkled into some of those. So those characters aren't done. So, or the, the seeds of those characters aren't done. Mm. Um, so that's one way of looking at it. I think, I think everybody would be cool with that if they actually do develop into something. And I also just, I guess it's just my way. My wife calls me the Debbie Downer, but I try to temper my enthusiasm. Because yeah, they're saying things to the investors. They're, they're kind of, I'm not, the word that's in my head is virtue signaling, but they're not virtue signaling. They're trying to use words for their investors to say, look, right. we're developing things. We're moving forward. Yeah. Keep putting your money into where we're coming because we're moving forward. And to the fan, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, they're saying right. that this is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And what they're really saying is we're, we're, we're still in development. We're still producing. We're still looking at new stories. We're still moving forward with them. Like these guys weren't just three movies and we shelved them because of the bad reaction. We want to keep working them into stories. So that's right. kind of- And I wonder, I wonder, Brent, to your point, like how much of this backlash that Kathleen Kennedy is getting on this is in light of what just recently happened. Like reality is like when, when the sequels came out, Joe said something on the show I thought was so good of like, man, you know what would make the sequels so much better is if we had like a Clone Wars for the sequels, like a, like a, another show or, or maybe, uh, you know, some more audiobooks, right? That kind of like flushed out, like, like the uh, Phasma audiobook that came out. There, there's a character I felt like was wasted mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the sequels, but the, the book is stinking awesome. I mean, it just, you know, really, really good, kind of gritty, gives some great context and background. So like, if she comes out and says, yeah, I, I'm just trying to differentiate. Is this about the sequel trilogy characters or is this about don't give me hope because the hope is what will kill you. Right. Like what, <laughs> like, like where's well, the outrage coming from? You know, oh, I'm not, I'm not outraged. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for the potential, but I, I, but I get, I, I get disappointed when it's like you guys were saying earlier, like, you know, like they, they shoot this really great promotional with Patty Jenkins putting on the flight suit and, talking about this and then to hear that that's potentially not happening. It's just like, Oh man, you know, so, and I know that's just part of how development works, but, uh, but it, it, it just, it, it, it stings a little bit more when you get your, when they, when they do something that like concrete and that, you know, they gave that one a date too. Like that one, yeah, that yeah. one was a little bit crazier and that one hurts a little bit more because of that. I feel. Yeah. 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 Where Can you is imagine being quote? the guy that edited that and put all that together and spent yeah. the hours in the special effects? It, it may still happen. It may it may yeah. still happen, but it's it just you know. Alfie, go for it. Name me one Marvel movie off the top of your head that got shelved that we heard about. Why is this a Lucasfilm problem? That's interesting. Well, I and I will tell you that I don't follow them, right? I'm sure there are people that have talked about. And there, I might be wrong, right? And I don't know, but that, I think that's the reason why I feel like that's also the reason why the sequels get compared to, um, or get sh get kind of pooped on a little bit too, is because now everybody is comparing them to the way that Marvel ran their universe, and they're expecting everybody to run their universes like the Marvel ran their universe. Not everybody's going to have that same corporate structure. Not going to everybody's going to be that seamless with it, and when they go back and the problem was they didn't see a plan in a trilogy moving forward or they didn't have a cohesive story i think a lot of that comes from the fact that the mcu has an extremely cohesive story yeah. um, and they've done really well with weaving things together in fact like we talked about it in our text message with the eternals spoiler alert and i'm not going to share anything like major about it but there are a couple lines of dialogue that thrown in to let you know that it's grounded in that universe um I just watched Shang Chi, and they did the same thing. It was just, it was just a couple pieces of dialogue that make you realize, oh, we're still in the MCU because yeah. of things that are said. So they've woven it together. Not everybody develops that way, and I think we're getting, we're getting too caught up in the way that they ran it, and then we need to emulate it this way. I guess is the where I'm going with that. Well. Like, like you're saying different styles, but what I'm hearing is like, yeah, there's one system that does it really well. And there's one system that you get, you know, a trilogy and a half. Right. But not everybody can emulate that same system. Right? Why not? Like, not <laughs> They're owned by the same company. 
<laughs> but they're not owned by the same company. They're completely two different companies. They have a same umbrella company. I mean, Philip Morris also owns Kraft Mac and Cheese. A cigarette company owns a Kraft Mac and Cheese company, right? That's the same thing. They're, they're not the same. They're in the same umbrella. They're run by different people. Both okay. Right? Now, Brent, this that. is what I was talking about when I said I love your takes in the group text. This is what I was talking about. It brings a total different view than from what I'm thinking, man. But my I point is you it. have an umbrella that makes the same product. So if you're making two different kinds of mac and cheese and one is good and one you keep <laughs> having to throw away, <laughs> why wouldn't you make them <laughs> like your other factory? There's... It's just the corporate structure within the building, right? So the way that things are run, the way that people lead is different. Different corporations have different corporate structures and different leadership right. styles. And what I'm getting at is, yes, I think we're trying to, I think there's another thing too, is we're all saying that Marvel and Di they're all Disney, but they're not, Disney really has no in influence on them. Marvel runs itself and uh, Lucasfilm runs itself. And every now and then they go back to Disney and say, this is what we're planning to do. And they have to sit with Disney and Disney says, okay, yes or no. Yeah. Um, this is lively discussion before people start shouting at their radios or at their iPod or whatever they're listening to. Uh, for the sake of time, maybe we segue into some happier news, uh, more speculation, but at the same point, uh, the stuff that keeps us coming back week after week after week. There was an announcement that was made since the last time that we all got together about a new casting of Sabine Wren in the upcoming Ahsoka series. I'm going to butcher her name, so if somebody would like to say it better, please do. But Natasha Lou uh, Bordizo, I say that right? Anybody know? Yes? No? Okay, well, it's right, because I said it, and there's nobody here to correct me, was cast as the new Sabine Wren. I'm curious because... Brent, you're a big Rebels guy. I know we have. I know uh, some of some people still have not watched Rebels. We're figuring it all out. But do we? How do we feel about this cast? Do we like it? Any uh, opinions right off the bat? So I like it. Why? I know nothing about this actor because I like the character. And I want to see more of her. Fair, fair. Yeah, and I'm, so I'm I'm a big uh, Rebels fan, and uh, so. The, the fact that they they were casting her at all mean, just means that we're going to get to see Sabine with Ahsoka, and that gives me hope that we might see Ezra. So, like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm so excited about, you know, there's there's some rumblings that this might be kind of a live-action sequel to Rebels, which I would be so on board with, and I, I, I really love that show. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm the fact that they cast her means that, you know, more of those characters are coming around, and I, I think that'd be amazing. Right. And true or false, they cast... Ezra Bridger, is that or is that speculation? I, I to me, I think that's still rumor. Uh, I never saw a, like a variety, okay. like I haven't seen like a, 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 a reputable magazine say right, right. that one yet. I've, I've seen other other websites that are kind of known for clickbait saying things, but uh, but I don't know right. if it's official yet. Alfie, D Doc, either of you know what this actress has been in up to this point? I'm sure we no. can do a quick IMDb search and figure it out, Brent. So all I was going to say was I know absolutely nothing about the character, but I will second with the same thing that Mark and Alfie have just said, which is I am a huge fan of the character. And if you give me anything that is acrobatic and uh, blowing stuff up, uh, I can live with it. Just give me that character and write that character the way that she was in Rebels and I, I can live with it. But I don't know anything about like, so if you want a reaction to the actual character playing that person, I have no idea, know nothing about it. And I will hold judgment until the scene, the episodes come out. But right. just like Mark said, give me as much, uh, give me as much Sabine Wren as you can. Right. I will tell you one of the things that got me excited about the casting, similar to what both of you guys said, but, but just in a different lens is um, this to me continues to speak to like, there's progress and like we're moving in the right direction. And I think for me, like when uh, the last episode of season two of the Mandalorian came out, similar i was sad because i was like wow now we've got to wait like another year to see where do we go from here and there's so many places we could go and what we could see when i see uh we're getting cast uh people are being cast for ahsoka all i can think about is mandalorian and think about the amazing you know just 
scenes and things we're going to see in the new Mandalorian season three, if that's true with Mando, with potential Grogu, with Sabine, with Ezra, like how these all interplay in this time period uh, with Book of Boba now kind of coming in and with uh, Fennec Shan, like all these great characters that are kind of coming full circle being cast in live action to me, just it continues to make me super excited. Yeah. D Doc, anything you'd add? Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm still in the beginning stages of Rebels because you know I was late to the game on Clone Wars, uh, so I'm I'm in the beginning of Rebels. But um, kind of back to what Mark said about how he was surprised um, that they kind of let the Hayden leak. I mean, they did such a good job of keeping Luke Skywalker close to the vest in season two of The Mandalorian. I I'm surprised that we're getting actresses for these characters where it's just like, all right, they're gonna come back where. You know, I, I don't know if they're doing it just because, like, you know, the fan base is is so hungry for this stuff or what. You know, maybe they're letting out little nuggets here and there, but I'm surprised they're they're letting it out because I know Sabine is a big, you know, a lot of people are huge fans of her, which I'm still learning who her character is. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm surprised you. I'm surprised we're getting actresses in that. Yeah, they're coming back. You know. Right. My right. my well, hope is though is that that means they've got a bigger surprise like under their you know under their sleeve that they'll 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 be able to still get us with if they, if they're showing us this stuff they must have even bigger stuff coming that they're not telling us is my hope so hmm. and this is again the rat wheel that we're all on of man i'm hoping that there's more and that it's really exciting and then they say you know what we pushed it back another two years and then yeah, we yeah. all get to come and <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have you on in another six months mark right, right. and this gets pushed back and we and we figure something out <laughs> yeah. we're, go we're gonna be on twitter tomorrow and see mark thompson cast as thrawn in the ahsoka series <laughs> what <laughs> i wish we're all gonna know. i can dig it i can dig it <laughs> hey another another piece that came out and i I think it's pertinent. Joe sent it over our way uh, based on something that came out this, I think it was this last week from what he sent. I'm, I'm assuming that Alfie is going to be able to talk more about this, uh, but Columbia, the jacket company just released. Did anybody see this? The new mm -hmm. Boba Fett coats that have come out. Mark shaking yes. his head, D-Doc shaking his head. I think they're sharp as yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, anybody I need one of those. I was going to say, you getting in the list yet? I was so um, mad. Why were you mad, Mark? Well, because I so I just bought uh, a Rebel. I, I was holding off on buying a uh, rain jacket because I was I was wanting Columbia to come up with one because they do it every year. I, I didn't like the design of the Mando one last year, so then I, I just bought a new one. But then then I just saw this and I was like, ah, oh, if I just waited a little longer. I, I'd be able to get that Boba one because it's it's like it's it, the 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 out they have the outer shell and then the inner puff jacket and it just it really looks nice like it's like I like it when it's a little bit more like true to the design of the character so like the fact that it's got the mythosaur on the side and yeah like that's awesome like it's so good right. um, yeah that's, I, I have that's the uh, I have the 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 Rogue One uh, Columbia jacket that's like the the one that Cassian wears and it's it's I love that one so that is so cool I I like it too because it's from just from what I can see on it, like it's Star Wars, but it's very like minimalist. Yes. Star yes, Wars. Yes, like, yes. I feel like there can be like, like chintzy Star Wars sometimes, which I'll mm -hmm. still buy and I'll put in my house, but you know, to like walk, yeah, yeah. like I'm, I'm not walking in the office with, you know, you know, my chintzy Star Wars. Yeah. You know, with, <laughs> <laughs> with my, uh, with my Christmas sweater every day, but I, it, it's sleek, man. I think it, yeah. I think it looks pretty cool. I saw that and immediately thought, I think this was designed for Alfie Molinero. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna look good with those Nikes. Have you seen the Nikes? No, I oh, haven't. No. Yet. I thought they were yeah. Adidas ones. Like they're, Adidas. They're awesome. Well, Adidas holds the licensing. Nike just said, "Screw it, we'll just make some with the colors." With the colors. They don't say just, Star yeah. Wars, but yeah, 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 yeah. But they got the they got the orange and the green and the yeah. There's like a there's Boba Fett, Vader, and I think Bosk mm -hmm. color pattern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The ones are the. Adidas ones are really cool too, though. Those Adidas Fet shoes are pretty solid. Um, I'm gonna I give it to you guys on the screen again. Sorry, but it, there's oh, yeah, yeah, that's Nikes. awesome. Those and are the then, Nike ones. Yeah, there's like a ah, rebel, that rebel shoe. one's great. There's the uh, Boba and then Vader. It's dark, but yeah, they did them so right. 
<laughs> um, I had not heard about this, so I, I I'm actually on my computer tonight. So I decided to look up the Columbia Jacket Star Wars. It's a sleek ad campaign on their website too it's a really cool bespin looking uh scene where they're standing on bespin uh, standing with the jackets oh, there's wow. also a really subtle hoodie um that's in there too there's a hoodie that looks like a, the undercoat or something like that and just has like the grain of wheat symbol yeah I mean, yeah yeah really subtle and like that one looks really cool too so yeah, yeah i had not heard of them but i definitely went and checked them out those are those are spot on yeah it is very cool. Do we do we know how much this costs? Uh, the hoodie yeah. was one hundred twenty. Yeah, Sheesh. the jacket's four fifty. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah jacket's four fifty. Man, but I Disney. Was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Disney just continuing to come up with ways to get all of Alfie's money. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Every you know penny. What? You could just have it. Just take it. I dropped my jaw at the four hundred fifty dollar jacket. Meanwhile, last night I was watching my uh, favorite Lego guy on YouTube building the eight hundred dollar ATAT. So oh. yeah, we're at at whatever yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you prefer. That and thing think is of how insane. much more practical the coat would be than the <laughs> than the ATAT, Dave. You just you know use that. Yeah, but think about how cool the ATAT would look on the shelf behind him while we're having the podcast. And think of how pissed his wife would be with an eight hundred dollar ATAT up in the background in her office, mind you. Her office. I was watching it. I'm like, this thing is absolutely amazing. And then he was like, it listed eight hundred dollars. I immediately turned it off. I'm just like, <laughs> I saw it. Anymore. I'm just like, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't pull that one off. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, one more uh, quick little piece. Uh, of, of info and I know we texted about it this last week I think Alfie might have been the one that actually put it in the group message uh, when we did it uh, but one that gets me really really excited uh, is that it was announced that Dark Horse Comics, comics is coming back to making Star Wars comics alongside Marvel I could talk at nauseum on this uh, but I'm curious for you guys. I know some of us read the comics some of us don't excited about this not excited about this do you need it What's your take on this? Alfie, I'm I know excited. you're into the comics. Yeah. Mark, you too? Yeah, like I'm excited I, I, about it. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, I, I, I liked some of the old Dark Horse stories. And, and, and so I, I, I always thought they did a great job with them. So, I, but I, I'm liking what Marvel's doing too. So I'm glad that both of them will do it because it'll be fun to have, you know, multiple titles out. Does this mean IDW is not doing it anymore or who's losing? Is anybody or now all of them will be doing it? Do you know? I don't know. That's a great question. No. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm not sure. I, I know that. And, and again, we talked about it earlier, but when, when Revenge of the Sith ended, uh, I, I was, you know, I won't tell you how old I was, but it ended and I, and I was, I was deeply disappointed. I went, well, if that's all that we get, then I better go find the next best thing, which is probably at my public library and went and found this whole rack of dark horse comics yeah. and just poured through everyone and thought they were, they were visually compelling. I, I think that, uh, you know, I've read some uh, Batman dark horse comics ex and uh, Superman ones that they've done as well too, which are just beautiful and, yeah. and, and well done and, and good stories in stories that were different off the beaten path than what we've normally, you know, tried to do. And that was that for me. So, so it holds a kind of tender, spot in my heart I, I i'm with you mark i've enjoyed some of the marvel stuff um that they've been doing recently but for me it's still i, I don't know if it's just the publishing house or what is it but i i'm really excited about dark yeah. horse coming back and i'll be curious to see how they do that in conjunction with marvel who's making yeah. stories as well alfie do you know if they said anything about like these will be canon these won't be canon they'll be i have not read anything that says that 100 for sure because you would imagine this would be a continuity nightmare having yeah, multiple. Yeah. You would think so. Yeah, yeah. And I, then they I'm start excited about this. You know, to me, there's never going to be another comic that replaces Dark Empire. There's, and it, I, and I know, I know it's not that good, great of a comic, but that it's just the experience of, you know, I think I was 13 at the time walking through Target and seeing that issue. And it was so bold and different and it's just such a different take on the characters. And it just looked so amazing. 
I don't I know the comics aren't going to be like that just because they're by Dark Horse or anything, but there's still that sense of kind of nostalgia of can we go back to that level of excitement for a comic book? Right. And I felt like you tell me true or false on this, Alfie, but I felt like even the risks that they were willing to take with some of their stories were like um, I, I remember reading and of course I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it was Dark Horse where you go back to like the inception of the galaxy or like of the universe almost. And they get into all like the myth and the lore of there was this ancient civilization. And then yeah. there were these great pyramids that, you know, just kind of floated from space that, you know, and, 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 and what I like now reading high Republic is that I read or high Republic and I, there are little pieces of it that like kind of poke out that almost pay um, like what, like what book was it? It was, um, Oh, I think it was Into the Dark, the one that they did, where I can't remember what the which character it was, but he's floating on some planet by himself in the sea. Uh, oh yeah, and of I'm course I can't remember it off the top of my head now. But it. it's Elzar like Man, yeah, Elzar Man, and it's like a yeah. callback to something that was in those Dark Horse comic books like way long ago, and and so they went all the way there, all the way to um, what I think it was like Legacy, and it was. Um, you know, Darth Crate and like hundreds of years now post Return of the Jedi. And to me, again, I told you I could talk at nauseum about it, but I just get excited about, <laughs> man, could we get some more of that? You know, and I don't even care if it's canon, it doesn't matter. I think all of us agree. Some of us choose what's canon and what's not canon, even in our own yeah, brains, yeah. and just <laughs> kind of kind of roll with that. But I'm excited. Any more anything else on Dark Horse before we move on from that? No, no. I mean, I honestly, like, I'm not the biggest comic guy and I don't want to go into, um, you guys are going to make me start reading these comics. Just like I started collecting the freaking black series figures <laughs> and <laughs> listening to the audio books. But, um, another interesting thing on top of this is that, it, uh, Alfie, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't EA, uh, losing their rights to star Wars and it's going to someone else as far as video games too. I mean, I know I'm going to a different area here, but you know, you're switching your comics and, you're also switching your rights to your video games as well. I think they're like, so all I was going to go with, because I don't read them as well, is I feel like this is a signal that Lucasfilm is loosening up on their control of their licensing. Um, because I think EA still has it, but it's not an exclusive because I believe they're also building a Lucasfilm, their animation or a video game unit, or trying to reestablish a video game unit underneath the Lucas umbrella. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, I think I've read that or I saw that. I could be dead wrong on that, but it sounds like if they're going to keep Marvel and Dark Horse and EA and another, like it sounds like there may be a loosening of their their IP stranglehold. Alfie, from what I read about EA and the video games, DDoc was it is an issue on licensing and kind of like when you make a sequel to the move a movie how you have to keep paying more to the actors who were in the previous movie a battlefront three would have to do like such an ungodly percentage to be profitable so they mm -hmm. said now nah, we'll just make some new games instead we can yeah, make, because we can make that... four games instead of one so we'll just do that that, that came out in the news this week that EA passed on Battlefront 3, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And also, when I was watching that ad at video, um, he said, like, Lego just came out with their new Titanic. It has, like, 3,000 more pieces than the ad at. He said the reason the ad at is $800 is because it has Star Wars on the box. So, oh, wow. Yeah. He said that there's, there's a big licensing fee that comes yeah. with it, so they got to get their chunk with that, and people wow. are going to buy it, so... Yeah, Sorry, I took us off topic there, but no, that's right on. That's right on. What were you going to say, Mark? Is EA still going to do a uh, Fallen Order two? I hope. Uh, I hope. I don't so. think I love EA. That game. All they said EA was that they Fallen had Order. three well, they did. single player games in development instead oh, wow. of Battlefront three. Oh, okay. I'd be down. I'll with that. take that then. I, yeah. I think Fallen Order is one of the best. I, I mean, obviously, you have Force Unleashed, which was awesome. But yep. I, I mean, Fallen Order was just such a great story. Yep. And yeah, like totally. you would just sit there and watch the scenes and you'd feel like you're in a movie. Yeah. And then I'd be like, all right, here we go. And then next thing you know, I'm lost on the map and I didn't even right, care yeah. because the visuals <laughs> yeah. were amazing. Like that was a great game. 
Yeah. And you know what? The story was so good in it too. This was, I, I was, I was talking to, uh, I think I was talking to Sam, one of the other guys who jumps on the podcast for once in a while and does Clone Wars stuff. I judge it as a good video game because I, I'm rarely the guy like I'll play a video game and I'm like, OK, I played it. I'm done with it. Like, I don't need to go back and do that again. To your point, D-Doc, I was, you know, a couple months back roaming the maps because I had only completed, you know, 60 percent of the map to finish the story. And there yeah. was still 40 percent of it that I hadn't seen. And just going, this is an unreal sized game that I, if, if anything, like you know, it, when, when we get more info on Fallen Order 2, similar to the Kenobi series, the world will just kind of stop and we go, okay, we'll spend time and we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, Brent. So are they still in the development of like an open world open? Uh, is that still in development? Cause like last I heard that it was, I don't know if it was a la Fallen Order, but the idea was that there was going to be this massive open world um, Skyrim style Star Wars game. From what I heard, it's still in development. Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anything that's that's shifted so far. Anything on the Twitterverse? I look down on my screen to Alfie and Dave, who know better than I do. <laughs> Lucasfilm development. That's all I've read. Lucasfilm development. There you go. So I'm just gonna go. I hope that they loosen the IP because I really like my Legions game, and I think some of the they they trickle out the uh, the the new releases. Um, partially because they have to clear them through Lucasfilm. And so I'm hoping if they do loosen the IP, they can then loosen up and start developing uh, more characters and start pu punching them out. And this is another reason why I say that they're two different companies. The Marvel game that is made by the same, the same company will punch out characters like two a month. Whereas wow. Lucasfilm, it's like, we haven't had a new character in like six months. Like, so it's, it's, there are, they're just different companies. Right. 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 Well, Hey, listen, we've been going, we've been jamming on some of this stuff and, and having some good lively conversation. This is what I love about this group, right. That we can all sit on different spectrums, you know, some people, yeah, we can, we can sit on all these different spectrums and yet still come together and talk Star Wars. I'm curious before we hit a couple just, you know, fun, quick things to, to end out any other big topics that we missed tonight that you guys go, man, I wanted to talk about this and we didn't get to talk about it. No, but I, I have, have. I was going to throw one little thing, a little nugget. I was listening to a um, audio book that's not Mark Thompson, um, but it's one of the newer books. It's set in the first oral time frame, and it's kind of a guy like Quinlan Voss, a kid like Quinlan Voss, who touches things and gets a vision of what's going back in the past. And he's traveling around. He went to Jakku and talked to Uka or Plunked uh, and went into like his uh, trading post. Anyway, he was going to the. He went to Batu where he saw and he ran into an Ethurian who was kind of like, um, a, like a historical dealer and possibly like an underground person in Batu. So what I'm getting at, we saw somebody who looked like an underground person that was an Ethurian that was in the Be Boba Fett preview. That's right. I see what you're saying. Like the crime boss. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, it's and... not even near true, but it was just like, there was just like, there was a lot of like, oh, oh, there's an Ethurian that was kind of like a crime boss. So they, is it possible that Boba goes to Batu? That's is this all Force Collector? About. Is that the book you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, uh, I think so. I can't remember the name of the book. Let me pull it up real quick. Yeah. Uh, Alfie looked like, you look like you were getting ready to dispute that. Journey to the, Journey to no, Star Wars. Force we Collector. talked about we're, that, we're, we're, uh, the podcast, we talked about the Book of Boba Fett trailer. Yeah, right, 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 right. With the Athorian crime boss looking yeah. like a long faced Marlon Brando. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Dave, you were going to say something. I was going to bring up something that has nothing to do with Star Wars, but I watched the new <laughs> Jurassic World trailer and that thing. Did any of you guys watch the five minute Jurassic no. World preview? No, I need to watch it. When did that come out? Is that out now? Today. It just came out today. They released the first five minutes of the movie. They so did? It's no way. the first five minutes of the movie. And my little guy, he's he's uh, almost five and he's starting to really get into dinosaurs. And me and him watch it together. And it is awesome. So uh, I know it's not Star Wars, but you know, uh, like the Jurassic World movies, you know, they're they're fun to watch. This one looks freaking awesome. So watch that trailer. 
I also right. watched Mark. Uh, watch, I watched your reaction video on your YouTube channel to the uh, Spider-Man trail. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah, I felt that same hype. I was watching you guys watch that because I was. Yeah. I was I was on your YouTube watching some of your stuff before the show. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Check out Mark. <laughs> check out Mark's YouTube channel, guys. <laughs> Which, speaking of that, parenthetically, Mark, where can people follow you? How can they find you? Um, and and maybe a better question: How can they support you in what you're doing? Oh yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter as Captain Ehud, and uh, I'm on Instagram as Ken, Captain Ehud, and then uh, on Facebook I'm just myself. I'm Mark uh, Thompson on there. Um, but yeah, I mean the uh, if it just any any time you you buy the, the the books, it's a huge support, and uh, uh, pe- people are generally really generous uh, reaching out. And if if you like it. Um, I do think that Penguin Random House pays attention to that stuff. So if you, if you do notice anything and if you want to say something about it on the, on there, they, they pay attention to all that. So, Right, right. Well, we're going to go around the horn real quick. I'm just curious, Brent, any closing thoughts as we close out uh, this dynamic, crazy episode that we've done tonight? No, I'm just glad that I can blow my Dave's mind each week with the way that I think about things because it's different <laughs> than the way that he thinks yeah. about it. Um, and I am impressed anytime somebody can throw four different voices out in a 30 second span. So, and keep them square in his mind, at least for a little while. So I love listening to Mark and all the stuff that he reads. So um, thank you for coming on again. Um, and I enjoy listening to your audiobooks. And I just, is there anyone that's coming out? And, like what's the newest one coming out that we need to check out? The well, Lesser Evil just came out now. So the the last that's the final of the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy, and it's a really huge wrap up. It's like over five hundred pages long. So it's uh it's really epic and, and really well done. And then in January will be uh the High Republic Fallen Star, which you definitely want to check out. So right. the Claudia Gray one. The Claudia Gray one, yeah. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. D Doc, any closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just thought it was awesome to have Mark on the show here. I mean, I'm a huge audiobook guy, and to, to have the guy who I'm listening to in my audiobooks, it's just <laughs> freaking awesome. I'm just getting started, too. So when we have you on the podcast in the future, hopefully I'm further along into plenty more of uh, your books. So That's I enjoy awesome. it. You do great work, man. Oh, thank you. And I'm excited to know that I will forever be bonded to your wallpaper. So <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> Healthy Molinero. Anything, any closing thoughts? I love having guys like Mark on and hearing about the behind the scenes of making Star Wars products that we get to see, listen to. It just fascinates me. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, yeah. It was really fun. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Mark, we appreciate it more than you know. It's so fun. Uh, Just the kind of extended family that's grown out of this rule of the galaxy. You know, you think of T-Bob, you think of... Uh, Ryan McGee, we had on last week, you think of Steve Glosson, you think of, you know, just, just everyone who's kind of coming through this. And it's just, uh, we are the recipients of the stuff that you guys do. So just thank you again um, from, from us. A couple quick things as we wrap out, um, just to everyone who's listening, uh, we, we wouldn't be doing this if you guys weren't listening. So thank you so much for listening. November was our largest month ever for the podcast as far as listening goes. And so thank you so much um just for all of our listeners for all of our guests for jumping on uh and being a part of it uh joe sent me just a quick note thank you to clark uh broussard for uh and i butchered it so excuse me for the kind emails about the show we just appreciate you guys you can email us at rule the galaxy sw um that's our twitter handle but you can email us rule the galaxy sw at gmail.com um and one of the big questions that we wanted to ask you guys just before we go this is joe um you know just thinking about future of the podcast and, and kind of where we go. Joe wants to know, um, should we start a rule the galaxy shop for hats, shirts, magnets, stickers, etc.? Like, should we get some swag going and get some rule of the galaxy merchandise out there? If you think it's a good idea, shoot us an email, rule the galaxy SW at gmail.com. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys and would love to hear what would you love to see a rule of the galaxy logo on what's the thing that you would go man i would i would wear that if it had the rule of the galaxy logo on it underwear so, underwear <laughs> <laughs> there you go hey you never know we put joe on it see what he can do and 
see you as resources come from. So, hey, we appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for listening, for taking the time. Uh, we will be back again shortly. We got another Clone Wars Chronicles coming up. We got some more shows with some great guests coming up in the future. Uh, but until next time, may the force be with you. <laughs>